dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 6. To say it is hot outside, well, that just might be an understatement. And if you've been outside today, you know that. That heat will stay with us a little bit longer. And to keep you informed for the weekend, we began with Chief Meteorologist Paige Noel. Paige, what can we expect and what are some dangers of this really hot weather? Well, Macy, if you're outside for just a long period of time, you definitely could get some heat exhaustion or heat strokes. That's why we say take breaks in the shade and really just limit time outdoors. Even right now, it's 6 o'clock. We're still into the upper 80s to lower 90s outside. If you're over in Wise, you're definitely in that cooler spot of 82, but we're seeing at 93 in Hazard over into Richmond as well. But it's feeling like a lot warmer than it actually is. It's feeling like those 100s to even above 100, some spots into the upper 90s. So that's what's making it feel a lot warmer than it actually is especially if you're in the sun so that's why we say take breaks in the shade and obviously stay hydrated drink water and a lot of people keep saying they drink Gatorade but drinking water is really the best thing for you as we head into the rest of this evening and into tomorrow as well you'll notice this heat advisory and the excessive heat warning that is in effect now and it continues to be into effect until 8 p.m. on your Saturday so we still have over 24 hours on this advisory and warning so it's been overall dry today maybe some spots saw a stray shower or two might be wishing for that to cool you off just a little bit, but this heat really does continue as we head into your Saturday. Good news is cold front arrives and brings those cooler temperatures. Bad news, of course, brings more rain to the mountains. I'll look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes. All right, thanks, Paige. Definitely a good day to be inside. And as those temperatures are in the right are on the rise, so are the public's concerns for the Pike County community. Officials have opened cooling centers throughout the county to help those who may not have access to air conditioning. Meanwhile, local businesses and organizations are also doing their part to help those in need. WIMT's Buddy Forbes has more. From the county cooling centers to hydration help. It's not just Pike County's officials stepping up to help combat the heat wave. Luckily for some, the rise in temperatures began on the East Kentucky Dream Center's free meals day. This morning we had some people come in early. Uh, they were sitting outside and Diane, you know, asked them to come in where they could sit and be in the cool even though we weren't serving yet. But they wanted to do something extra to help those who may not have access to cold water. And we just thought that it would be a great idea to put out a barrel with ice water so people walking by or that needed a cold drink could stop in and get a water. Volunteer Paula Lowe says she is glad to see all the community support during this time. I think it's great that the community is coming together to uh, help people that are um, hot. Mike Johnson, owner of Johnson's Home and Garden in Coal Run, agrees, but he worries someone may be getting left out. There's nobody talking about the pets this time of year. He says animals may not always be on the radar during a heat wave like this. We haven't had any rain, so it's not like some of the Pets can go around and find a little mud puddle somewhere and get a drink. So he wanted to give them a way to get free water as well. I've seen it in other cities that they'll put out a little bowl of water for people who have pets, and I thought, well, I'll try that here. Two different hydration projects creating drops in the same bucket as the county comes together to get through the heat. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The cooling stations in Pike County will open back up again tomorrow starting at 1 in the afternoon and both hydration stations are currently open 24 7. And we've told you them before, but we're going to go over some heat safety tips again. Try to stay in cool places, preferably in air conditioning if you can. Try to not do a lot while you're outside. And if you do have things you have to do, take breaks and drink plenty of water. Check on family members or neighbors. Never leave children, the elderly, or pets in a closed car. And watch out for heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. As we head into the weekend, you should keep an eye out for a murder suspect. This is Charles Ray Blevins. Earlier this week, state police issued a warrant for his arrest. They believe he shot and killed a man earlier this month near a park in Pike County. He should be considered dangerous, and anyone with information needs to call 606-433-7711. One person is behind bars and another is on the run following a motorcycle chase in Clay County early this morning.
Deputies say it all started off of South Highway 421 around 2 a.m. They say Simpson, who was seen here, was the passenger on a motorcycle that took off. The chase lasted about six miles before Felicia Simpson and the driver ran off on foot. Now that driver was able to escape, but deputies say they know who the man is. Simpson faces multiple charges, including first degree fleeing or evading. The Hazard community gathered together today to say goodbye to Marlena Holland Hurt. She was found murdered early Sunday morning in Bobby Davis Park. WIMT's Emily Bennett talked to those who watched her grow up. I'm standing here at Consolidated Baptist Church here in Hazard. This was a church that Marlena grew up in and she was even baptized in. And today the family gathered to say their final goodbyes. It was a celebration of Marlena Holland Hurt's life. Many of her family members sang songs. And those closest to her shared memories. The congregation at Consolidated Baptist Church raised her. She was involved in all of their activities, always willing to help. I've witnessed her on many occasions being willing to give all that she had uh, to others that she didn't even know. So she had a servant's heart. They say she was smiling down at them today. I think Marlena would have been very pleased with her service today. And everyone says one thing. They will always remember her smile. The community will gather tonight at 8.30 at Bobby Davis Park for a candlelight vigil in honor of Marlena. We'll have more on that at 11. And the family says they're very thankful for the support and that it's simply overwhelming. And they're just thankful for the Hazard community overall. Now, next week, the man charged with killing Marlena Holland Hurt will appear in court. Anthony Lewis faces a murder charge. Police say he stabbed and beat her. His arraignment is scheduled for Tuesday. A Laurel County man is behind bars. Police say they found him walking down the middle of the road while he was high. This man, Sean Holt, is accused of walking the wrong way down US 25 with his eyes closed. Deputies say they found him around 11 o'clock last night. Holt faces multiple charges, including public intoxication and giving an officer false information. He was taken to the Laurel County Detention Center. Now we want to remind you drivers using Kentucky 15 here in Perry County about a major traffic change expected next week. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet says you should be prepared for changes at the intersection of Morton Boulevard and Kentucky 15 in Hazard, which you're seeing here on the map. Now that is near the Applebee's and Food City if you're not good with roadways. The change is currently scheduled for Tuesday, so be sure to drive safe if you're heading that way. A well-known name among the horse racing world has died. Mary Lou Whitney and her husband were a major force in horse racing. She was the owner to several champion horses and she won the Eclipse Award of Merit back in 2010. She was also a well-known philanthrop philanthropist and socialite. For years, she was the co-host of the Cardinal Hill Hospital Telethon, which you can see here on WKYT. She donated tens of thousands of dollars to the hospital, and a wing of the facility is named for her. She was also known for her elegant derby parties, and Mary Lou Whitney was 93 years old. Middle Creek Fire and Rescue is adding some new equipment to its gear after securing $10,000 in grant funding from the Kentucky Department of Forestry. Fire Chief James Bittler says the funding will be used to purchase wildland fire equipment for the department. Now he says this equipment will allow the department to fight fires on the mountains and in the farmland areas of Floyd County. He says it could be a game changer and potentially a lifesaver in some situations. We really don't have the funding to go into the mountain terrain and fight wildland fires. Uh, before we already always took a stance uh, from a way back and sprayed water. Uh, but now this uh, grant will able to get our guys trained, equip them, and get them in the mountains. He says the department is looking forward to being able to help the community in a new way. Day one of the special session is in the books. Lawmakers gathered in Frankfurt this morning, and their goal is to pass a pension relief bill. The bill specifically would help regional universities and quasi-government agencies. Now, without relief, their pension costs will soar. Hillary Thornton wraps up the first day of that session. The discussions here on this first day of this special session not really centering around the topic of why lawmakers are here, 
but instead about the guidelines Governor Bevin put out. And the specificity of that call is making a mockery of this legislative process. That is the basis of a fiery floor speech about separation of powers by minority House leader Rocky Adkins, countered by a speech by Speaker Pro Tem David Meade. 2008, in that session, Governor Bashir made a 182 page call with the bill included in it, House Bill 1. The sponsor of that bill was a gentleman from Elliott. Leader Adkins claiming that was a totally different situation and is not comparable. House Democrats appreciative the Republican leadership did give their two bills a reading and committee assignment. How much further those ideas will go, still unknown. But it's certainly we're open to all, all thoughts and ideas, but again, the, the call is going to limit us to some degree as to what we can do. The Republican bill, which is Governor Bevin's proposal, also given its first reading and assigned to the committee. Still the differing opinions on the call to special session consuming most of the brief first day. Leaders in the Senate aligning with their counterparts in the House. Democrats adamant Governor Bevin is overstepping. Almost Republicans agree he is within his authority. The legislature's job is to legislate. So let's come in here and let's actually have solutions to the pension problem offered by all sides instead of some ideological uh, decision by the governor. At the Capitol, Hillary Thornton, WYMT Mountain News. Now lawmakers will be back at the Capitol tomorrow. Leaders say they expect to have a bill ready for the governor to sign on Wednesday. And it's heating up outside, but that is not stopping people from getting back to school ready. More than 1,000 kids were at the City of Whitesburg River Park for Letcher County's Back to School Bash. Every kid there got a backpack full of school supplies. All the activities, including a variety of bouncy houses, a ride on the fire truck. Now that sounds fun. Food and some ICs were all free. This is Letcher County's 15th year for holding the event. A lot of people are without jobs. Uh, recently, with the recent layoffs of the coal mines, has really affected Letcher County. Without the help of all the organizations and, and the city and, and different businesses uh, coming together and putting this together, uh, it wouldn't be possible. Among the list of volunteers was high school football team Eagles Landing Christian Academy from outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Now, one of the team's affiliates grew up in Letcher County and wanted to come back to the mountains and give back. And he says for a lot of the kids, this event is so important because it's like their vacation. And we have one more day of those really, really hot temperatures before a cold front moves in and finally cools us off. 70s are in sight. Have a look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes. Plus new information today in a Harlan County death investigation. Hear from the victim's family next.